describe the high school football season as a roller coaster would be an understatement. The Braves entered week three feeling great about their week two performance. A date with Class 3A, number three, Cardinal Ritter would provide another test of where the Braves fit in the Class 3A picture. The Braves were focused and energetic in their preparation for the challenge that Ritter presented. Let's go, boys! Hey, let's lock him in the mouth, all right? Braves on three, one, two, three! Braves! The Braves' defense and special teams once again set the tone. With the defense forcing a three and out, it was time for the special teams to shine. A poor snap led to the Braves' offense getting the ball at the Raiders' 10-yard line. Senior quarterback Derek Ozovu promptly scooted for a 10-yard touchdown and an early 7-0 lead in the first quarter. Let's go, baby! Another poor snap by Ritter, this time on a field goal attempt, kept the Raiders off the scoreboard and kept the momentum with the Braves. This 38-yard reception from Ozovu to Jacob Pressler set the Braves up again deep in Raider territory but a sack of Azobu on third down forced the Braves to settle for a field goal. The Raiders were flagged for roughing the kicker, giving the Braves a second chance on the drive. They took advantage of the miscue with Jacob Pressler's fifth touchdown reception of the season to make the score 14 to nothing. The offense again drove deep into Raider territory, but had to settle for a field goal attempt. This time, Alex Potts was unable to convert, and it seemed the momentum may shift. The Raiders drove the length of the field and capped off the drive with this pass from Damani Small to Kyle Price to make the score 14-7 at the half. The Braves got the ball to start the second half, but an Ozobu interception put the Raider offense back in business. The Raiders capitalized again on the Braves' miscue with another small touchdown pass, this time to Ben Egonoff. After giving up two straight scoring drives, the defense would once again come up with a big play. Let's go defense! Simon Banks' interception gave the Braves a chance to take the lead, but the offense was unable to capitalize. The tie would stand until late in the fourth quarter when Small swept around the right end to give the Raiders the lead. A three and out made the Braves' chances seem dim. The door was shut when Daniel Ingram was flagged for pass interference and the Raiders were able to run out the clock by taking a knee, sending the Braves to a 21-14 defeat. The loss was a painful one for the Braves, but one bright spot continues to be the play of wide receiver Jacob Pressler. Okay, Jacob Pressler, he's definitely our, our, probably our best deep ball threat. Um, he's 6'5", so he's always open. There are not a lot of DBs, especially in, in, in our conference or, or 3A that can guard him. Um, he's strong hands, you go up and get it. Uh, he's a heck of a blocker, so he, he's a full, full talent, all-around talent. And I'm happy to have him because he bails us out of a situation. Not the best start, obviously. I mean, 1-2 is kind of rough. Uh, definitely believe that we should be 3-0, and but... We've seen some good things that I think we can improve on, so we're going to try to build off of that. And, you know, going up, fighting with somebody for a jump ball, I kind of kind of look at it. I'm a basketball player, so I look at it as like a, a rebound. And it's 
honestly one of the best feelings ever you just take the ball away from them it's kind of like snatching their soul you know I mean they get you know you turn around once you score you see they're very frustrated they don't know what happened they thought they had a pick but yeah I mean that's it's one of the best feelings there is Bad I'm dude. usually a pretty quiet dude but uh once I get myself going I start start running my mouth a little bit uh make sure you know they know who I am and they know that they can't guard me I always let them know about that one but yeah I do I do run my mouth quite a bit I think it helps me play better and gets me more amped up the Braves will once again look to get to 500 against Class 5A, number 11, Zionsville. Zionsville is a well-coached ball club. Um, they do a lot of different things offensively. They kind of try to pick you apart and dink and dunk you down the field. Um, they're spread offense, and they're going to push the tempo. And they're going to look at what you're doing, and they're going to make adjustments. So our kids have to be ready to make adjustments right back and try to hang in there for all four quarters. Playing, I guess, my alma mater. Uh, you know, I grew up playing with all these guys put all stars in middle school together uh, I kind of know you know all of their uh, skill sets and what they can and can't do it's kind of the first time was weird lining up against them but this time you know kind of used to it and uh, I really want to come out with a win this time haven't beat them since I've since I've been playing and uh, it'd be great to just you know kind of show them that I made the right decision coming to rebuff instead of going there the Braves return home this Friday night at 7 p.m. to take on the Eagles of Zionsville